he was deferred to almost uh, like a star. For instance, uh, I, I seem to remember that, that uh, he was smoking and no one else was allowed to smoke. Hugh Everett had finally received the recognition he'd always craved. He certainly seemed to be enjoying the conference. He seemed to be firing on all six or eight or however many it was cylinders and was impressing everybody with the sharpness of his arguments. It was the beginning of a role for the theory of parallel universes, and soon it was seeping ever more into popular culture. Books, television and films all embraced the concept as a staple plot device. Now they had some genuine science to go with their fiction. But Hugh Everett would see little of this. Five years after the Texas conference in 1982, Hugh died of a heart attack, exacerbated by his smoking and hard drinking. He was only 51 years old. He had worked on his theory for just three years. The rest of his life had been spent working for the military and in business. Those little tapes that we found in the uh in my basement that were on a strange antique format that we couldn't play. I have now had my team of experts um, transfer them. A little bit nervous, yeah. I don't, um, just don't know what to expect here. Well, let's see what we got. Hmm. Don't really want to play it. <laughs> I don't know what to expect here. Well, all right, here it goes. Male voices. This should be interesting. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, testing, testing. Well, it's been a great evening. Why don't you lead on after your drink by telling us how you got started with weird quantum mechanics? Well, it was because of you and Owen Peterson one night at the graduate college after a slosh or two of sherry, if you might recall. Wow, you okay, know? that does, I rem that is my father's voice. I, I recognize it there. Wow, he's talking about, like, that picture we saw. Oh, no, we're starting to say some ridiculous things about the implications of quantum mechanics. And I was having a little fun joshing you and telling you some of the outrageous implications of what you said. And, uh, <clears throat> As we had a little more sherry and got a little farther into the conversation. Oh, okay. I didn't have. I got my dad excited. <laughs> it's weird hearing him be so talkative, too, because I rarely ever heard him talk that much. He still feels that way a little bit. <laughs> Even as recently as last month in Austin, he's still a little bit. Feel what was that last month in Austin? Wait, then I know when this is. <laughs> Even as recently as last month in Austin, he's still a little bit. It's interesting because my dad doesn't sound bitter at all here, and, and I think he's sort of on a high because he just finally got some recognition. The, this is, you know, a month after he went on the, the trip to Austin. And he said, like, oh, you should have been in Austin. There's obviously something wrong here. I showed the paradoxes and whatnot, and something should be done to change it. Uh-oh. Uh he did keep saying why, or, you know, why. I'm he playing did, drums. Did his ultimate conservatism, as he put it, kept coming through, you know. Not phasing my dad whatsoever. You know, you had to put Johnny on the straight and narrow track. End of this tape. <sighs> so weird. It's weird because it's like the sounds of my house, you know, there and... Yeah, it's hard because I, you know... I would, as much as I hate to look back on it all and everything, I'd also, like, love to be able to be back there just for one night, maybe, you know? Various voices. Duration, 21 minutes, 7 seconds. Sounds like a hit to me. <gasps> I think that's our cat purring. I'm pretty sure. It's funny if that's my dad recording that. <laughs> if he's recording the cat purring, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, he did have a, a thing with animals that was contrary to the way he was with humans. Which I also have too, it turns out, as you may have noticed. <laughs> oh.
thought I heard a duck. We didn't have a duck. Hello there, my name is Mark Gilbert, and I am very great. And you know it because I am great and beautiful and super fantastic great. Do you know that I am great? Da 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 I am great. <laughs> I wonder where my delusions of grandeur came from. Oh, and then we've lost power because it... I told you, this is a weird family. We're all, we were all clearly experiments. <laughs> I'm turning out just like my father. Though I swore I never would. Now I can say that I have love for him. I never really understood what it must have been like for him living inside his head. I feel like he's here with me now, even though he's dead. I feel like I know my father a lot better, you know, I feel a lot more connected to him, I understand more, like, the, the whole timeline of events and when the, he was dreaming these things up, when, they, when he actually did it, and, uh, and, you know, just talking to all these people that knew him, and it's interesting, it feels like he's around now, you know more than I've ever felt. <laughs> that was too good. I was like, good. I, I mean, I mean, I was just gonna sound like we put that in, in sound effects, you know? It's too fucking perfect. So in the end, I'd like to say that I'm a very thankful man. I had some regrets, but if I had to do it all again, well, it's something I'd like to do. I'm not a physics genius. I can't even open an umbrella. You know, for years I haven't opened up any of the boxes under my house with my dad's stuff and everything, and, and I've known it was coming eventually or I was going to have to because of the mounting interest in him. Da, 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 da. But now that I'm doing it, I'm really glad I'm doing it. It, it feels good, and it, it's such a like genuinely unique experience to go through. However, I still have a little bit of trepidation about the rest of my life having to be like the ambassador from, from the planet Everett, you know. Had I known this was coming, I probably wouldn't have even attempted music and figured, well, I'll, I'll get girls this way. Uh, then again, the physics guys, not really the same as rock stars, are they? They are, though, in their world, though, you know? Like my dad is a rock star of, of the physics world, for sure. BBC4 is proud to be showing coverage of the Grierson Awards for Documentary on Wednesday at 9, celebrating the best in factual filmmaking. Next tonight, Stephen Polyakov's elegant drama, Capturing Mary. Birds.